This is episode 59. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is Enoch Bartlett Sears, and I'm your skipper on the show as we navigate the waters of creating an architecture business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable so we can stop worrying about paying the bills and instead focus on creating great architecture and having fun as architects. Today's broadcast is sponsored by the Business of Architecture Conference, featuring everything you ever wanted to know about starting an architecture firm, attracting and landing the right clients, and building that business that I like to talk about so much, which is both fun, flexible, and profitable. We have some great speakers lined up, but they're top secret for the time being, and I guarantee they won't disappoint. The conference will also feature a topic that has been never discussed before in the world of architecture. Stay tuned for more on this. You won't want to miss it. Tickets will be released in batches. To get discounted tickets, get on the early access notification list by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash conference. There you can submit your email address to get on the notification list when the first batch of discounted tickets is released. And once again, that site is businessofarchitecture.com forward slash conference. For today's show, we have a, an excellent opportunity here to have be joined by David Andreozzi. David is a custom residential architect based out of Rhode Island. He specializes in luxury homes on the East Coast and maybe elsewhere. Maybe we'll find out more about his practice a little bit later. But in addition to being an, an architect, he's also the national chair of the Custom Residential Architects Network, which is a sort of a, a subgroup or a, a knowledge community, I, I'm sure David can correct me, in the AIA, American Institute of Architects. And David has an interesting story. He originally started out loathing sort of the AIA or seeing some deficiencies, shall we say. Uh, and then now he's the, the current chair. So David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Enoch. I really appreciate you inviting me. Excellent. So did I overstate when I said you loathed the AIA? Maybe understated, yes. Uh, it, no, I, I resented, loathed. Um, I was not a fan. And the reasons are pretty obvious because most of the residential architects that I've known that have been paying dues for 10, 20, 30 years have felt similarly that we do not, we have not received support um, from the AIA. So we pay our dues, we get AIA in the back of our name, and we get a discount, or we used to get a discount on cheap AIA contracts. Those are expensive now. Um, and basically you get, you, we receive nothing else. So over the, over the years I went to uh, national conferences uh, all over the country and basically realized that there's nobody on the floor with residential products, there's no residential courses. There's basically I'm be out there by myself struggling. And that became a resentment over the years, paying that bill every year, to be honest. So about 10 years ago, um, a group uh, was formed um, by Jeremiah Eck, Duo Dickinson, and Dennis Wedlick called CORA, the Congress of Residential Architecture. Originally, we, I jumped on board just soon after uh, it was uh, instituted, and I became involved nationally um, with them. And what we originally thought, or what I originally thought, was that this might become a replacement for the AIA and actually provide support back to architects. Well, after about a year or so, it continued to do great work and support content, but it morphed into uh, really becoming an advocate to support um, the c concept of educating the public on the importance of using an architect or using good design, as opposed to supporting architects per se. So they sort of drifted on and morphed into something different. And I continued to stay involved and ran the forum and that were involved with their, uh, their symposiums and things. Um, but over time, a group of us that were actually with involved with Cora decided, you know, let's just see if we can actually get into the belly of the beast, the big ship, uh, AIA and see if we can actually create something within that organization. And so that started and um, it started with the first conference or symposium was in Chicago. They actually invited me to speak at that conference. Um, and that's how I actually then dove headfirst into uh, CRAN. 
Um, again, that's, that is a knowledge community, and it's the Custom Residential Architecture Network. Um, we have a website. The website is aia.org backslash CRAN. Anybody can go and anybody can join. You, uh, you don't have to be an AIA member. Um, so this, once the ball started rolling, basically we started to – this the symposium, which started out at 75 people – it started to go from city to city. It went to Indianapolis, the next year to Austin, then to Newport, where I actually hosted it. I'm from Rhode Island. And then last year to Santa Fe, where we had almost 200 custom residential architects come together for three days to share ideas, to, to listen to the most amazing residential architectural practitioners speak and educate us and get true content on this little teeny conference. Our next conference is actually coming up um, September 18th to the 20th. Um, it's called Architecture of Influence. It's going to be in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, it's going to be it's going to have I think 17 amazing architects, and it's going to be headlining with Andres Tuani and Robert A. M. Stern. We're talking about rock stars, and so th- that's just one. We, as we started to work within the AIA, basically it's stepping back. We went to the AIA and said, you know, what's going on here? Why aren't you providing content back to us? And we actually had, I think, like seven or eight of us flew into D.C. and we sat around this conference table. And the answer to us was, listen, we provide support for volunteers. Most of the volunteers involved with the AIA come from large, large commercial firms. And so we provide them support. Say, what do you want to do, they said. And we looked kind of speechless. We were surprised. And we were like, really? I said, really? What do you want to do? And what we realized at that moment was the AIA support staff was really there for us. And we just had to organize what to do. So one of the things was obviously the symposium, which was growing. I mean, and I can go on and on and on of the many things that we've involved with. But, I mean, we have a book series that's um, – our first book is coming out for the convention. And it's specializing on um, well-designed regional architecture throughout the United States. And how we define it is, is it good or is it not good, irrespective of its style? What we feel in CRAN is that we've been sort of, it's been put upon us that only modern architecture is good. I mean, we're taught that from from college. I mean, to the point where I was taught that. And when I judge things, I tend to choose modern things as being better. But we need to, like, our feeling is we need to forget that and say, no, architecture can be good, whether it's modern or the other 90% of architecture, which is traditional and all variants thereof. So by creating a book that judges architecture, almost commodity, firmness, and delight, Vitruvius, using those aspects as a datum, but then taking into, as, taking into a relation the importance of vernacular, handmade uh, local materials, handmade local materials, and um, um, true green, as it were, Putting that onto it, then you can actually judge great architecture based on how it responds to the individual vernacular or region. And so that's coming out, um, that's coming out as well very, very soon. So we have all of these little projects, and obviously one of the projects which um, originally sparked our dialogue back and forth was CRAN TV. So that was actually born um, as an idea, again, of educating the public on the importance of what an architect does and and educating them how to choose an architect why and why it's important to have an architect. So our feeling was with CRAN TV was that you could actually create small three-minute videos that are that would be viral. They're not viral in the sense that we expect that 50,000 people are going to watch them tomorrow, but viral in the sense that you would do a search for architecture and stumble upon one of these and all of a sudden be on a cache of wonderful small vignettes of um, – What's the, you know, what's the role of the client in the architectural process? How to choose your architect for your project? Who needs an architect? Or the architect's education? I mean, honest to goodness, I mean, how many people even know the difference between an architect's education and a kitchen designer's education? I mean, there's a, a little difference, about a decade's worth of uh, education, uh, two weeks compared to a decade. Um, so the importance of when you should be reaching out to uh, a, an architect and why, the resale value, and all of those aspects all get wrapped up into CRAN TV. CRAN TV right now, we have, we just published our fourth video. It's at, um, it's on YouTube. So if you just search CRAN TV and YouTube, you'll get our first four videos. 
So that's three of, if I was thinking clearly, I could give you other projects that our, our larger group, CRAN, is working on. So again, try to provide once and for all content back to residential architects for the AIA. And I have to say that, I mean, even at the last AIA convention, I mean, we were heralded as one of the uh, the darlings of repositioning. And because the fact is, is that what we're doing is, as a matter of fact, we actually received a repositioning grant to produce two extra videos last year. So what they're looking at us as being this this perfect ideal uh, example of the at the ground level creating content and pushing it up to the top of the AIA so then it can actually be distributed back down to the AIA. So it's it's a cool thing to be involved with this and starting to develop power because the fact is is that that's what you're looking for. You're looking for relevancy. You're looking for power. And power maybe that's the wrong word, but that's it is it. It's 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 relevancy. And why is the why is CRAN right now focusing on? It seems like it's focusing a lot on the education aspect of educating the public. Why? What's important about that? Well, there there are different. We have different uh, aspects. There are different roles within CRAN. So one role is to educate the architect on the important uh, on on basically content. So when you come to our symposiums, you're we're bringing in LED ex. LED lighting experts. We're bringing in great vernacular architects. We're bringing in great traditional architects. We're bringing in uh, histo- um, restoration architects. So, so you we're providing content back to educate the architect themselves. But part of our wing or our responsibility, it almost ties back to Cora, which which is to actually begin to educate the importance uh, to educate the public on the importance of hiring an architect. I mean, the fact is, is that there's this illusion, there's this, we've created, we, and I include myself in this, we've propagated this image that an architect does starchitect crazy architecture, right? They've got their, their bow tie, right? And they've got their corbeau glasses, and they've got their three Mont Blanc pens that they like bought out of college with their money from gifts. Okay? The fact is, is that like, that's just a bunch of crap. I mean, the fact is, is that architects are, we like to say, it's not about the architecture. We shouldn't be awarding, we should be not celebrating the architecture. We shouldn't be celebrating the architect as a star architect. We need to be celebrating the process of doing architecture. We need to be teaching the public that the reason you buy uh, or that you go to use an architect is the same reason that you go to an attorney when you're going through a divorce. Or it's the same reason that you go to a doctor when you're sick, because you need to have a professional that is going to bring you from point A to point B and is going to protect your, 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 in, in our case, in the architect's case, it's protecting our nest egg. So if we buy a $300,000 house and we want to put a $80,000 addition onto it. Well, you don't want to put $80,000 of things that are, are bad zit on the side of your face things onto the house that that the next person, when they come to buy that house, is going to say, well, why do you have a swimming lane? Only one out of every 300 people want a swimming lane. So that doesn't have value to me. So to be to, to have an architect making smart decisions to protect the resale value of your house. And, I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, how many of our parents and grandparents, the resale value of your house, that's your nest egg. That's what you're relying partially on to in retirement. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd, I'd just like to point out to those who aren't watching the video, who were just listening to this, that when David was talking about the corbu glasses and the bow tie, David has a bow tie, and he put on some very, very similar circular glasses to the ones that, that Corb used to wear. So uh, if any of you have have corbu glasses and bow tie, it's it's all in good good jest, right, David? You know what? You, have, you can't make fun of yourself. You have to really, really and truly have fun. So we have a we have a book coming out that sounds fascinating, and tell me a little bit more about the book that Cran's coming out with in terms of the content and the focus of this book. Who is it geared towards? Architects or clients? It's going to be d- d- geared towards clients. Um, it's being done. I wish I had the information in front of me. Um, it's I think it's a house uh, houses of all regions, and um, there's links on that main AIA Cran website. And basically, we're looking for projects to, and. To, of really good design. The first book is going to be amazing. You're going to see it because I was involved, not because I was involved, but 
I, we, the, the, we were involved with picking every project. We didn't give this to somebody else. And we picked great modern projects, and we picked great traditional projects. But they all have one thing in common. They have an immense sensitivity to their local vernacular. And, th and so our, it, but really, when you pick it up, it's going to be a glossy book, not for architects. It's going to be a glossy book. It's really going to be dumbed down, meaning, and I dumbed down, I, I, what I mean is there's going to be not a lot of Arca speak in there, not a lot of Corbu glasses. So, but it's going to be made for the average public so they can look at it and go, okay. Well, the problem is, again, it gets back to, is that the, I, I really believe that the art, that the average public believes that, well, I don't need, I don't want what Frank Gehry does and I don't want what Zaha Hadid does. So, I must not need an architect. Maybe I need somebody, I need something less than an architect. And this is the, basically the problem with the, again, ourselves, basically shooting ourselves in the foot for the last four decades, but be giving awards and celebrating in published magazines and celebrating it in school up until recently. What's the most modern, greatest thing? And then celebrating that is the only right thing. So we've created this dynamic this flawed dynamic, and it's our responsibility to start to change that wake, change that, that, that ship moving in the other direction. How big of a problem do you think it is that disjuncture between the public's perception of what architects do and what architects, custom residential architects, really do? It's, it's, it's night and day. I mean, you, if you go and you ask anybody what an architect does, um, I mean, I, I just had a client call up for a very uh, a, a beautiful po possibility of an absolutely beautiful commission. The first time that they've designed a house, they bought a four acre lot, um, and they're interviewing me, and they're asking about the process of okay. So explain how it works. Are you involved to the end? What's your involvement as far as do I have to get the the, the contractors? And what they what the public doesn't, hasn't been educated to, and that sounds condescending, and that's not obviously how I mean it, but the, what, the pro, what the public doesn't realize is that it's not the architect's job to give you this fluffy piece of, 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 of sculpture and then, which, with program placed in it. It's the, it's the architect's job to bring you through the process from the very beginning to the very end, to protect your, you from, protect you, to oversee you from the contractor, and to be involved as an integral team player and protect your, again, your nest egg. So they, there's no connection there. And so we're starting really at like the, the, the zero level, I believe. I mean, I would say, and the interesting thing about this is that if you look at commercial architecture, you wouldn't even consider hiring, doing a project without a commercial architect. It's like, it's not even, it's not even a consideration. So somehow this is that divergence and, and I, I, you can blame it that some states don't allow, that, that, that don't force uh, everybody to use architects, but I don't believe that that's actually the solution either. I think there has to be a middle ground. Uh, everybody can't can't afford a custom designed three million dollar yacht. I mean, so that's not the reality. The reality is that how do you get good design and make people des um, re demand good design and get it to the middle? Level. I mean, you look at examples that do that. I mean, one would be the iPhone. I mean, being able to say, okay, I'm going to package something up that's amazingly well designed, and then I'm going to give it back, and the public is going to realize how good it is, and they say, wow, how did I live without this? And, or I, I make the analogy about the difference between um, a, a Honda race car that they may be doing for Le Mans. I think they used to. I'm not sure they do anymore. And the the five or six Honda Accords that I owned that were the most reliable cars that I ever owned in my life. And so how does one company is, you know, supplying cars to race for Le Mans, but they're able to take that technology in the same design department and give these Honda Accords that, it, you know, talking about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, were designed so magically, efficiently. How do you create that same thing and, and get it to the public? And so that's sort of something that I think Cran is actually looking at as well. How, how can we get good design and filter it down in the masses? And I think part of this video will, the, these videos, when you watch them, you start to realize, okay, almost at an HGTV level, you're like, okay, I, I, I see that. I, I don't even necessarily 
have to hire an architect to design it, then maybe I'm going to just hire an architect as a consultant. I'm going to have him come out, give me four hours of time, give him, pay him for his time, and begin to get some educated decisions. Go with this window. Don't, the windows don't need to be replaced. They need to be restored. Save your money and use it over here. So th that's an example of, again, just because you're hiring an architect doesn't mean that you have to be hiring the architect that does the custom residences that gets the big fees. You need to take it in teaspoons and other alternatives. I think it, both, we have to figure out how we can actually do it as well. How do we provide that service and make it available? Have you found that architects are, it's difficult to get them to embrace what you're doing, David? Have you felt any pushback or skepticism based upon previous prejudice against the AIA or maybe criticism of what you guys are trying to do there? Um, I think in the, in the beginning, um, this is the, part of the history of CRAN is that we started out as when we asked for a place to live, we asked for a, yeah, a place to live within the AIA, they gave us a closet. And the closet was off, was off of housing, which we're very friendly with the housing, that knowledge community. But we were a subset of housing. And they said, you stay there for a year or so and we'll see how you do. And then we actually, within the first year, we had $50,000 in the bank from it, it starting to create content on our, from this sponsorship, starting to create content. And they're like, whoa, whoa. And so we then asked, can we become our own knowledge community? And at that moment, there was this little divergence where like, well, what are you doing? Why are you leaving? And well, custom residential architecture really is a little bit different. And so I will say that there definitely in the very beginning was this sort of feeling like, you're only doing it for the super rich. And so you're not really, you, you need to be putting your effort into all of housing. And our feeling was no, the custom residential architecture can be done at all different levels. It doesn't, again, it can be consulting. It could be, okay, can you just provide me a sketch? That's what I can afford. Or, but somehow, and, and also getting involved at the lower, at the, at the, at the more middle levels. So I think that as time has gone on, I think that we the connection is definitely the is is increasing uh, as far as the them uh, both sides really understanding that there is a direct connection back and forth between what we do, which is custom residential, and what is considered sort of housing in general, which isn't is a it's a, such a more broad thing and it takes on five or ten different types of housing. I have two questions here just to finish up talking about Cran, David, and the first one would be, how can how is how can architects use what you're doing in Cran to to help their businesses? And I guess just go go ahead and answer that one, and then I'll follow up with the second question. Well, the biggest thing this was the biggest thing about this video. And I have to tell you what I have to jump in one more thing. The videos were originally an idea that came, we set up a relationship with um, with Doug Pat, and 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 with Doug, who is how to how to architect. He basically has a video series that basically educates people on what it is to be an architect. And we actually had him um, speak at one of our uh, symposiums on an unrelated thing, his amazing inventions and his creativity. And also one of those was his how to architect. And from that, years later, we stumbled on, on talking back and forth about the possibility of creating these videos. But the, the, we believe that these videos, as they're standing still, these are already set up on AIA uh, sites, not all of them, but many AIA sites are already providing links to our videos on their local AIA uh, sites. And so, and we're encouraging architects to provide links. I mean, if you think about it, how many times do you get an, uh, a telephone call from a client that says, well, I really don't know if I need an architect. And, and I'm interviewing you, but I'm also interviewing a designer down the street that charges the same as you. And so our feeling was, wouldn't it be great to say, let me, do me a favor. Can I just send you some links and just take a look and see what an architect is, see what their education is, see how they can be relevant, see how they're a little bit different. Realize the fact that, guess what? Uh, an architect has an, has the ability to buy an E and O, an errors and omissions policy, and a designer doesn't. So in a way, they're protecting your nest egg. They're protecting you, you're being protected by that insurance policy. So there's so many different aspects uh, that, that you're getting protection. So our, I think the video, it, this video series is, I think our primary way that we're trying to reach directly out. Okay. So there's okay. So there's the video series, and I would encourage 
uh, architects to embed those on your websites. And is that allowed, David? No, no, we encourage it. Absolutely. Yep. Please. Okay. Uh, send it out and your, your email, you know, you can send this to people in email to educate them. And then, so that was the, the first question. The second follow-up question, David, would be how do you think that's how they can use it? How do you foresee this helping architects in their practices? Well, that, that aspect the only result of that would be that you'd have increased business. And so I don't, I think that's, that's asking a lot to, to expect that the videos are going to increase your business in a year. So that's why I think some of the other things that Cran are doing, and that's where the benefits to a, a residential architects really are occurring. Those are things like the Cran, um, the Cran symposiums. We also, once you sign up, you're getting a Cran newsletter. We're producing, it's called a Chronicle. It comes out every quarter and it has, a dozen or so articles of rel relevant information right to your desktop that's being produced by us, CRAN. So those are the ways that we're trying to educate people on new products, new ideas, interviews, and things like that. So we're, we're, we're definitely taking different tacks to come at it from different angles. Okay. And then let's just tell everyone really quickly how they can get involved or how they can benefit from some of these resources, how they can connect with CRAN, get the Cranicle, and join the, the community, even if they're not AIA members. Well, the, the place to start is to go to AIA, AIA.org backslash CRAN and basically just sign up there uh, and become a member of that website. It's, uh, it's on the Knowledge Net. And again, you don't have to be a paying member of, of the AIA. Although I have to be honest with you, it's funny that as people are there over two or three years and become more and more bonded into what we're doing, they become involved and become members of the AIA. But, um, if you're not an architect or you didn't go to architecture school, I mean, go become a member and that content is there and it's ready for you to start using. Okay. So, and give me the pitch for the symposium. Tell us about that and why people who can get there should be there. The symposium is one of the most amazing events. Um, I can't even explain how many people put it this way. It's so good that our advertisers every year sign up almost a mat automatically as soon as the event ends. There's, there's, a, there's, um, it's two and a half days. We have usually, um, one day is, uh, our bus tours. This year we're going to do a half day walking tour of Charleston and then we're going to take a bus tour out to the islands and we're going to be seeing all sorts of custom residential designed architecture, both modern and traditional. Um, in addition to that, we have, uh, lectures and I'm talking about again, unbelievable lectures, not just local people that we could just fill in. We're flying people in from all over the country um, to give lectures. Again, I mentioned a Robert A.M. Sturm and Duani, among many others. Um, and in addition to that, it's the communication that you have with your with your, your fellow brethren. You're sitting there and you're at the table with all people that you are having things in common with. So you're talking about, of course, we can't talk about fees, but we talk about everything except for fees. We, and we'll talk about um, portfolios and talking about clients. And, and every night we have dinners where um, we actually go out and we go to dinner together. You actually sign up in groups with a sponsor and they basically take you out to dinner in a group and you sit with 10 people and you're sharing ideas and things. And I have to tell you, you leave after three days of just so invigorated. It, it, it will blow your mind. So I would encourage anybody to go. The link is not active yet, but it will all be driven from the main AIA.org backslash CRAN website. Um, and that it should be up within about one month. But if you follow it there, there's already information about the event itself. Um, please come and get involved. Excellent. Well, David's going to be there. I know I'm going to be there. And I hope to see anyone who's interested in custom residential architecture uh, visit the symposium and help it to continue to grow. So, David, thank you for everything that you've, you're spearheading right now for CRAN. I know you put in a lot of work and effort, and your service to the profession is truly appreciated. If for somebody that loathes the AIA, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, 
and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use Internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. Views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.